Hi, this is Josh from LeakDev, where our goal is to explain leak code prompts as simple and concise as we can. In this video, we will talk about the question, subarray sum equals k. Looking at data for the past six months, this question has been frequently asked in Facebook, so if that's your dream company, pay attention to this problem. Given an array of integers, num, and integer k, we want to return the total number of continuous subarrays whose sum equals to k. So what does that mean? Well, in example one, we have an array of three ones and our k is two. So we want to build a array of continuous subarrays, such as this, these two ones, that would add up to two. Another continuous subarray is these two indexes, and this will give us our answer, which is two. For example two, we're given this array of one, two, and three, and we want to find a k that is equal to three. We can do that by adding one and two over here. That would give us three. And that would also just be the three by itself over here. That would also give us an output of two. The first way of solving this problem is to do a brute force strategy and just check every single subarray, see if they add up to three. For example, we'll just start at one. We'll see if one equals three, it doesn't. Then we'll check if 1 plus 2 equals 3, which it does, so we add 1 to our answer. We check if 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 3, obviously it doesn't, and 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And then after we iterate through every combination using 1, we do the same thing using 2. Is 2 equal to 3? Nope. Is 2 plus 3 equal to 3? Nope. And is 2 plus 3 plus 4 equal to 3? No. It's important to note that we have to actually continue going through every single combination because, because the array is not necessarily all positive integers. Nowhere in the problem does it say that our integer values have to be positive, it can be negative. And if it's negative, that means there's a possibility that there is a combination with some negative number that will add up to three. And then we just continue on with our threes and then our fours. The brute force algorithm gives us a O of n squared algorithm because we are checking every single possible combination of subarrays and the space would be o of one because we're not using any extra storage space now let's see how we can do better in our previous solution we had a o of n squared runtime because we had to try every single combination to see if we had any sums that add up to k now if we want to improve on our algorithm we need to figure out a way to speed up this comparison from the previous solution we know that the, from the previous solution, we know that the key to solve this problem is to find all sums, some range sum of between i and j, that equals our k value. And we will denote this as sum i comma j. A formula for us to be able to calculate this is if we were to take, is to take the sum of everything from zero to j minus everything from 0 to i minus 1, and that would give us the sum of i through j. So sum 0 and to prove it to you, we can just calculate the sums. So net minus nine plus eight plus one is zero. Nine is just nine. And this whole entire thing is nine minus nine plus eight plus one, which would give us nine. And the equation that we mentioned is and this is our formal equation of how we would calculate this. To be able to achieve what we just talked about, we can iterate through our array values, calculating all the sums from zero to the specific index that we are on, which is sum O of O to J. Store them in a hash map, which will represent all of our values from zero to I minus one. We store the sums in the hash map because it gives us a quick way to do a lookup for the existence of a range that matches our K value. So let me explain. So remember our, formula here. We want to find some sum i j 
that equals our k value. Then we know that we have an answer. While we are iterating through our array and calculating the sum between 0 and j, we can check to see if there's a exists a sum from the range 0 to i minus 1 that equals sum of 0 and j, which is our current sum, minus k. If we were able to find the sum, that means there is some sum between the range i and j. We don't know what we don't know what i specifically, but we know it exists that equals k, which means we can increment our answer by 1. So to go through an example, let's say we are right here right now at index 3 of our array. The total sum we have right now is 9 because the sum of all of four of these values is 9. And I won't draw the whole map, but while we are iterating through our array and calculating the sum, we added the sum inside our map. So the first sum we had was 9. The second sum we had was 0. And then we had 8. And then we're on our current, our last index right now. So right now, we have a sum of 9. And then if we subtract the k that we're looking for, we get 0. So if there exists some range, some sum of 0 to i that equals 0, there must exist some subrange that would give us the answer. And there is. So in this example, our 0 minus i is from here, 0 i minus 1. Our sum of j is over here. So that would give us this range right here. This would be our i, and this would be our j. And that would give us an answer. Now that we went through our example, you might also wonder why are we storing all of our sums inside a hash map instead of a set? There's a possibility that, and the answer to that is there's a possibility that we might actually find multiple sums from 0 to i minus 1 that are the same. For example, if we ever want to find some k value, some range between 0 and minus 1 that equals 9, we can use this value, and we can also use this whole range right here. If we ever were, to, if we ever find some other value later on in this array, let's say I add a ten, and let's say it just magically works, then there's actually two combinations that we can use to reach our answer. We could use the first range here, and we can use the second range here. Now, obviously, ten isn't great, but you can imagine how this will work. Now, before we go into the live coding example, there is one extra edge case that we have to consider, specifically the edge case of what happens when our sum equals k. If our sum equals k, that already is an answer, but that would imply that we have some sum between 0 and i minus 1 that equals 0, which is not represented in our map yet. So to account for this, we just store 0 and give it a value 1 in our map when we initialize it. So with a rough idea of this algorithm, we can calculate our runtime, which would be O of n, because we are only iterating through all n elements in our array while we are adding the sums into our map. And then every time we have our new sum, we are doing an O of 1 lookup inside our map to see if there exists a sum between 0 and minus 1 that equals that equals our current range, total range, minus our k value, and if we were, which then we can quickly rearrange this formula to be, if our current sum minus the range, the, the value that we're looking for, which in this instance is k, so if our current sum minus k equals some sum from 0 to i minus 1 that we are storing in our map, that means there must exist an answer. And because we store it in a map, it's O of 1 lookup. Space complexity wise, it would also be O of n because we are only we are storing all the sums from 0 to n. Now that we have a rough idea of this algorithm, let's go to the live coding part and walk through this problem together. As always, we should first start off by initializing our variables, which includes our sum, our map, which would be 
which would store the sum from 0 to i minus 1, and then our answer that we will return. That would give us the values sum 0, answer 0, and then we have to account for our edge case where, where our sum equals our value k by inserting the sum 0 into our map. Now that's all done, we can start iterating through our array. In every index, we should add our current value to our sum. So we'll start off at index 0 and add 9 to 0, which will give us 9. Now, remember our previous formula that we talked about? If we were able to find some sum between 0 and i minus 1 that equals our current sum minus our k value, that means there must exist some that means there must exist some sum between i and j that equals k. And if that exists, we just add the value of that sum into our answer. And you'll see why that's important as we go through our example. Otherwise, we just put our current sum into our map. We need to add our current sum into our map because currently our sum represents the longest range between 0 and our i value. However, as we increment and iterate through our array, that is no longer the case, and the current sum we have will become some, a sum between 0 and i minus 1. So what we did here is that we just inserted our sum into our map, and if it exists in our map, we increment the number of values by 1 because it increases the number of possibilities that we can build up our answer. Otherwise, we just add 1 into it. Now with this code, we can go through our algorithm step by step. So at this point, since our k value is 9, we would check if sum minus 9 exists in our map. In this instant, it actually does because 9 itself equals k. So because that exists, we increment our answer by 1 because that is our value. And then once we're done with that, we put our current sum into our map because now it can be used for future calculations. Now we move on to negative 9. 9 plus negative 9 is 0. And we want to find if there is some sum between 0 and i minus 1 in our map that would equal 0 minus 9, our k value, which is negative 9. And if we look in our map, it doesn't, so we don't do anything. However, because our sum 0 exists in our map, we can now increment that value by 1. And so this becomes 2. You'll see how this becomes relevant later on. Continuing on, we move our index 4 by another 1, and we're at 1 now. 0 plus 1 is 1. And th we know there's no sum between 0 and i minus 1. That equals negative 8 in our map. So we don't do anything, and we just add our sum 1 into our map. Continuing on, we move to our next index, and things get a little bit more interesting. We have 8, so 1 plus 8 is 9. And if we subtract our k value, we get 0. And then we quickly look in our map, and we see that there's actually, we find that 0 is, does exist as a pre-sum that we calculated earlier, and there exist two possible ways that we can get 0.
if we were to show that in the array, one possible way to get zero is between is nine minus nine. And then the other way in the base case, and then we have our base case where we don't have anything and we just subtract and then we just subtract our full sum j zero j with zero or we can subtract it with zero and this value i minus one so now there are two possible ways for us to get the answer we increment our answer by two and that will give us three and then we add our sum into our map again because nine already exists we just increment that in case we ever encounter another number where we needed to have a sum of nine, which in this example we don't, so it's not an issue. And then finally, after we finish iterating through our array, we just return our answer and then we're done. Now let's run our code and we see that there is a bug. Oops, it's result not answer or it's answer not result. There we go. We know that works. Let's just submit it. And that's it for solving the subarray sum equals k problem. This problem has great applications of using hash map, which according to my own research, <coughs> Google <coughs> is the most common data structure that's used in coding interviews. Now I know this is a more complex solution and walkthrough, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, if you liked this video, please consider liking and subscribing to get more daily updates. Bye and have a great day.